Here we have Yanuka, the newly proclaimed Jewish Messiah. In order to be Messiah, you must complete certain requirements. Number one, prove you are a direct descendant of King David with legal documents. Yeshua has his documents in Matthew chapter 1 all the way back to King David. And Luke chapter 3 records his legal documents from his mother's side, also from King David. These documents were destroyed in the temple in 70 AD. Today, only Jesus Christ can make this claim and has his legal documents to the throne of King David. On this point alone, Yanuka gets disqualified as Messiah. But for the sake of arguments, we'll ignore this one aspect and we'll go into other aspects of the Messiah. We will go into the Torah from Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 it speaks of the seed of the woman could also be translated as the sperm of the woman now the virgin birth is also echoed in isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 it says that a virgin will be with a child and bring forth a son in hebrew it's alma meaning damsel or virgin now when the septuagint was put together, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. The Greek is a precision language, and they used for Alma the Greek word parthenos, and that specifically means virgin. Now we shall go into another aspect from the Torah, from Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. It speaks of the star. Numbers 24, 17. There was another who was called Bar Simon, who tried to connect himself with this prophecy, who was considered a messiah, as we will show you in this video. Behind me is the Pantheon. It's a shrine to the gods of Rome. It was built in 118 by the Emperor Hadrian as a symbol of Roman power. And that power was challenged, not by another empire, but by an angry Judean and his band of guerrillas. His followers called them Bar Kochva, the son of the star, Messiah. Who was this would-be Messiah that almost brought the power of Rome to its knees? 100 years after the crucifixion of Jesus came another Messiah. His name was Shimon Bar Kosiba. Unlike Jesus, he was a military genius and led the Jewish people in a revolt against Rome's military might. His exploits as a military leader were hailed by rabbis as almost supernatural. The greatest sage of those times, Rabbi Akiva, anointed him Messiah and renamed him Bar Kochva, the son of the star. The son of the star. Now, why the star? Because it says in the books of Moses that a star will kind of come out of Jacob. And that's taken as the only reference to Messiah. So anybody who had messianic pretensions, anybody who said, I am Messiah, he had to be connected to a star. Therefore, the star of Bethlehem leads the three wise men to Jesus. In regards to the star, here is what we have in regards to scientific data on the star of Yeshua. We know that Jesus was born in 3 to 2 BC, by the aid of computers and astronomical data, we are able to see what was happening in the heavens at the time. And it was awesome. The people would have been impressed and astounded at what they saw. We find that Jupiter was in conjunction with eight other planets and stellar constellations at the time, which helps to show that Jupiter was the star that Matthew was talking about. You can also read about that star in Matthew chapter 2. Now back to Genesis, the Torah, Genesis 49 verse 10, it speaks of Shiloh, which is a title of the Messiah. It says that the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. The scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. The scepter represents royal authority, the ability to govern oneself, the power of the courts to give the death penalty. Judah always had this ability until the time of Caesar Augustus removed it from Judah. And that's when Yeshua came, the reason why the Jews went to Pilate to get the death penalty. 